are about to listen to a message from Root River Community Church. If you live in the Rushford, Minnesota area and do not have a church home, we would love to have you at one of our Sunday morning services. For more information about our church, visit our website at rootriver.org. We hope and pray that God speaks to you through this message. Ezra chapter 8, verse 21. Uh, Let's read this together. The words will be up on the screen. It says this. This is Ezra speaking. He says, There by the Ahavel Canal I proclaimed a, let's say it together, fast. It's fasting season here at Root River Community Church. And I can feel the enthusiasm, the, the excitement that's in the air. Uh, He says, I proclaimed a fast so that we might humble ourselves before our God and ask him for a safe journey for us and our children with all our possessions. He goes on to say, I was ashamed to ask the king uh, for soldiers and horsemen to protect us from enemies on the road because we had told the king, the gracious hand of our God is on everyone who looks to him, but his anger His great anger is against all who forsake him. So we fasted and petitioned our God about this, and he answered our prayer. If you skip down to verse 31, it says this, On the twelfth day of the first month, we set out from the Ahabal Canal to go to Jerusalem. The hand of our God was on us. Can we say that together? The hand of our God was on us, and he protected us from enemies and bandits along the way. So we arrived in Jerusalem. And I want to start a new message series here this morning called Forward. You know, we're, we're kind of at a new beginning with the start of the new year. And uh, with that, we can, we can start going a new direction if we want to. And I believe that all of us, we, we don't want to stay where we are. We don't want to go back to what we have been doing. We want to go forward into the things that God has for us. There's something about the start of a new year that makes us all kind of examine our lives and say, what do we want to do differently this year than last year? Uh, Some of you, even as you came in, you thought like, hey, it's a new year. Maybe I should sit in a new spot. You know, some of you, you wrestled with that. I was talking with Kevin Feller before the service, and he said, last night we were thinking, should we try a new spot here this morning? And then I see they're still in the same spot, but that's okay. (laughs) That's okay. Chris Boehm, he ventured out. Good job, Chris. Uh, but it's kind of, you know, the start of the new year. You're thinking like, hey, what, what should I be doing differently this year than last year? How can I be going forward? People set goals, goals to move, to move forward, move forward in, the, in their finances, move forward in their family and their relationship with their, their spouse and with their kids. And they move forward. They try to move forward in their reading of God's word. Some of you have said like, hey, this year I want to be just more diligent in my Bible reading habits. And and let's get real. All of you women in the room, you set a new goal to lose weight this year. You've all said like, hey, this is the year. Like, this is the year to lose weight. Right? Right? Some of you are like, no, it's not the year. Uh, But it's kind of the time where we all examine our lives and we say we're not content with, with living the same way. We want to be going forwards. It's a time to say, this year's going to be different. I don't want it to look like the last. I want to be moving forward. Now, to give you some background on this passage that we just read, uh, last year, as I mentioned before, we studied uh, the book of Nehemiah. And Nehemiah comes after what we just read. It comes after Ezra. Nehemiah, he went into Jerusalem uh, after their, the Israelites and the Jews were being held in captivity, and he went into Jerusalem to rebuild the walls around Jerusalem. Uh, Prior to Ezra, a group of like 50,000 people moved back to Jerusalem, out of captivity, back into Jerusalem to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. And now Ezra is put in a spot where he just feels this burden to go into Jerusalem and to not really rebuild the temple, but to establish God's word in the temple, to establish God's word on people's hearts. Uh, 
And, and it's just interesting that Ezra chapter 8 actually falls on a new year. We read it before that this was the first month of the year. And during this first month of the year, something within Ezra's heart said, hey, we can't stay the same. We've got to be moving forward, forward into the things that God has for us. One translation of Ezra chapter 8 verse 31 actually words it this way. It says, then we set, what does it say? Forward from the river a havel on the twelfth day of the first month to go to Jerusalem, and the hand of God was upon us. Turn to your neighbor this morning and say, we're moving forward. Can you say that? Come on. I see some of you not saying it. You got to say it like you mean it. We're moving forward. Ezra knew. He, he knew that they couldn't stay where they were. He knew that Jerusalem was where God wanted them to be and that God had given it back to them. So he says, in this new year, we're going to be moving forward, not backwards. We're going to be moving forward to Jerusalem to worship God there in spirit and in truth. We're going to be moving forward to Jerusalem so we can obey God's commands there. And so what did he do to help accomplish this movement of going forward. It says that he fasted. He called a fast. Uh, Ezra knew that the only real way for them to really be moving forward into the things that God had for them was for the entire Jews that he was traveling with to, to fast together. It was a fast. And I want to title this message here this morning, Fasting forward, fasting forward. You know, as we look at 2017 and desire to move forward in our personal lives and our devotional habits and in, in just different things that God is calling us to, as we look ahead in 2017 to move forward in our family, you know, just restoring relationships with, with our, or our relationship with our spouse and with some of our children and grandchildren, as we look forward in 2017 uh, to try to move forward as a church body, I just think that we need to fast. We need to fast together and ask that God's gracious hand would continue to be on our lives. It's a humbling thing to fast. Now, what is fasting? We talked about fasting for three messages last year, and I just want to kind of recap it a little bit. Here's the definition that we use. Fasting is the deliberate act of abstaining from food in order to grow more hungry for the things of God. So it's more than dieting. It's more than skipping a meal. It's like this deliberate act of abstaining from food in order to grow your hunger for the things of God. It's growing your hunger for a move of God. It's growing your hunger for God's hand on your life, to be in God's presence, for God's deliverance in your life, for God's wisdom, for God's insight, His intervention. It's saying, it's saying I want to fast forward into the new year, into what God has for me. You know, so many of us are really controlled by food. Anybody in the room, like, you just know you're controlled by food. You're a sucker for food. Like, you, you just, you can't control yourself sometimes. You just all of a sudden find yourself in front of the fridge or in front of the pantry, and you're like, what am I doing here? I'm not even hungry. But you're just, the, the food, it draws you there. You know, I, I used to tease Krista about eating chocolate. A lot of times she keeps uh, these, some of you women in the room, you know what I'm saying. Uh, she keeps these like chocolate chip, baking chocolate chips in the freezer. And I, all the time I see her, you know, like snitching in the bag of chocolate chips, just putting them in her mouth. And I used to tease her about it until one day she wasn't there. And I was watching the kids. And one of the kids got a boo-boo, an owie. And a lot of times we give them a chocolate chip for their awi, and sometimes you wonder, like, are they just faking it so that they can get a chocolate chip? Uh, but, but I was giving them a chocolate chip, and I thought, oh, I'll try one too. And immediately, like, one chocolate chip, I was hooked. I was addicted. I mean, it was like, it was crazy. I can, all of a sudden, like, throughout the day, like, ten different times, I find myself going to the fridge and just pulling out gobs of chocolate chips and, and eating them. And I thought, what's happening to me? I, I can't control myself. We're controlled by food. Some of you would say that your stomach is the geographical location of the bottomless pit. You say, like, I can't, I can't even fill it up. Like, I just, I keep eating and eating and eating. And people say that the way to a man's heart is through their stomach. And I think Satan knows this as well. 
And he knows. He knows that he can get us to miss out on a spiritual blessing because we're so controlled by food. Even if you look at, at the Old Testament and some stories of people who were controlled by food and they missed out on a spiritual blessing, right away in Genesis, you see Adam and Eve. I mean, God gives them the entire Garden of Eden, God's presence. God is literally there with them. They're walking around. They got everything that they ever wanted, but then they lose it all because of some fruit hanging on a tree. They miss out on what God had for them because they can't control themselves. They miss out on God's blessing, on him trying to move them forward because they, they just can't control themselves. And you just go a couple chapters later in Genesis chapter 25 and you see the story of Esau and Jacob. And, and Jacob, uh, he gets Esau to give up his birthright all for a bowl of soup. I mean, Esau, he had everything. He had his father's blessing. He was going to inherit all of his father's wealth and, and everything his father had. But he gives it all for a bowl of soup. Like he misses out on a, on a huge blessing all because he can't control his stomach and his appetite. And we often, uh, we give in to our stomachs and we miss out what God wants to do in our spirit and in our soul. And I just think about 2017, like, I don't want to miss out on what God has for me. I don't want to miss out on God moving me forward and, and God blessing my marriage and my relationship with my kids. And I don't want to miss out on what God has for this church all because I'll trade it for a bowl of soup or, or some sort of fruit or something like that. I want all that God has for me. Anybody else in the room with me? Like you want all that God has for you. You want God's blessing and his hand on your life and you want him to move you forward. Like, guys, we can't give in. Like, I just think this 21-day time period, we need to really choose to fast and, and to press into what God has for us. Deuteronomy 32, verse 15, it says this, But Israel soon became fat and unruly. The people grew heavy, plumped, and stuffed. They abandoned the God who had made them. They made light of the rock of their salvation. They were so stuffed with food that they really lost their appetite for the things of God. Fasting is, is all over Scripture. It's mentioned 69 uh, different times. And people fasted for all different kinds of reasons. They fasted to mourn. They fasted to show repentance. They fasted to worship the Lord. They fasted out of desperation for God to intervene in their lives. They were really saying, hey, we want to be moving forward into the things that God has for us. And I just want to stir your faith for a few moments here this morning and just go over a few of the different stories throughout Scripture where people fasted. Moses, he fasted two different times that we know of for 40 different, for 40 days. Uh, during one of those times, get this, he receives the Ten Commandments of the Lord. Now, maybe just call it co coincidence, but maybe in your own life, you're just like, man, I want to hear the Lord speak to me more clearly. I want to be able to understand the things of God better. I would just urge you to try fasting. I mean, think about what happens in the story. Moses, he goes and he receives the Ten Commandments during one of his fasts. Hannah fasted in the Old Testament. Jonathan fasted in the Old Testament. He was upset about something that his father did, and, and through that process of fasting, he saw God move in his life. The men of Jabesh fasted. Elisha, uh, he, was, he, was being, he was depressed, and throughout that time in his life, he fasted, and got, he saw God move him forward. If you're a leader in the church or in your workplace, I, I just urge you to fast. Look at these leaders in the Old Testament who fasted. Fasted. King Darius fasted. King David multiple times fasted. And the Bible says that he was a man after God's own heart. King Jehoshaphat, he fasted. And, and, and through this story, uh, it, he just saw God do amazing things. He had a big victory in his life. David's men fasted, and they were able to do amazing things. Ezra, he fasted, as we read. Nehemiah fasted. Esther and Mordecai, they fasted for deliverance from a decree to kill all the Jews. And again, during this time, they just saw God break through. They saw God move them forward. Ezekiel, all of Nineveh fasted. Daniel fasted. He was greatly troubled over something he didn't understand. And so he chose to fast, and, and all of a sudden, an angel shows up. 
up. I mean, how wild is this? An angel shows up and the angel says, hey, Daniel, I want to give you wisdom and understanding in this situation so that you can move forward. Joel fasted, all of Judah fasted, all of Israel fasted, New Testament people fasted, Anna in the temple fasted, and get this, during this time of her fasting, she saw the Messiah, she saw Jesus, who she'd been waiting for all of her life. Uh, you want to see Jesus more clearly? I just urge you to fast. Uh, John's disciples fasted. Cornelius fasted. The leaders of Antioch, the church in Antioch, they fasted. And, and through that time of fasting, they sent out missionaries. And, and these missionaries, they really changed the entire course of church history. Paul fasted. Barnabas fasted. Jesus fasted to defeat uh, Satan's temptation. And I, I think about all of us, like how many more years are we going to be just kind of struggling with the same temptation, the same sin, the same sexual habits? the same addictions, uh, the, the same gossip with our tongues, like until we really take fasting seriously. God wants to move us forward, and I really believe that as we fast, he will be able to do that. Try fasting. Throughout history, modern-day history, fasting proves to, to be a source that people are to be uh, a help for people, to help move people forward. In 1963, the nations of Egypt, Jordan, and Syria allied together to attack Israel to totally wipe out the nation. All of Israel had been fasting and repenting of sin before God for 24 hours. And history records that the soldiers literally ran out of the synagogues to the front line, having not eaten anything for 24 hours. Uh, as, the fat, as the battle was going on, uh, it, it, early on in the battle, the, the, the enemies of Israel, uh, the, it looked like they were going to win. But on the third day, though they were significantly outnumbered, Israel's armies were victorious, and people attributed it to the fast that they were taking part in. Even in our American history, Abraham Lincoln called for five different separate fasts. One of them was during the Civil War. And a lot of people attribute the, the northern states, their victory in the Civil War, to the fast that Abraham Lincoln called. Now, fasting is just amazing what God can do as we humble ourselves through fasting. There's power in fasting. Now, fasting, it, it's an uncomfortable thing. Okay, it's like an amazing thing, but as soon as you heard me say fasting, uh, I saw it on your faces. You're like, oh, no, not again. Like, we should just skip this Sunday and, and come next Sunday. Uh, fasting, it's a hard thing. Uh, last year, it was hard for me, the 21-day fast that we did. I remember uh, one of the things that Krista and I fasted was just like extra like goodies and stuff. So, so chips was on that list. And I remember one day Gabe was eating chips and I like looked at the chips and I thought like, if I just lick the chip, is that really eating it? Or is that just like licking it? If I just get that taste in my mouth. And I remember I had this like internal battle with myself, whether it was okay to lick the chip or not. And some of you, I know you like fasted coffee or pop or something like that, and you thought to yourself like, hey, if I just gurgle my coffee, is that really drinking coffee? Because it's not like going, I'm not drinking, I'm just getting the taste in my mouth. Fasting, it's a hard thing. It's a hard thing. We cringe. I'm sure when Ezra called the fast, the Jews were like, oh, come on, Ezra. Like, do we really have to go there? Do we really have to fast? They cringed at the very word. Uh, but here's the deal. I really believe that Satan cringes as well. When we take fasting ser seriously, even in the story that we read with Ezra, I, I think his enemies, they were cringing and not even really knowing why. The people that wanted to attack them along the way, they were cringing because they knew that the hand of the Lord was on Ezra and was on the Jews during that time. Uh, and so many of us, we want to go forward like it's the start of the year and we, we want to be different and we want to be changed and, and, and we want to break old habits and we want to start better new habits and, and we want our marriages to be better and we want uh, we want to come out of the depression and we want, we want to have a better understanding of God's word and we want to have a better relationship with our grandkids and be able to speak into their lives or our own kids. 
But we often don't want it enough to fast. We often don't want it hard enough to really take fasting seriously. We want to move forward, but not at the cost of fasting. Uh, but, but friends, I just, again, want to urge us to really take fasting seriously. In my own life, again, I just don't want to miss out. As a church body, we just saw God do amazing things in 2016. I mean, we grew numerically. I believe that as a church body, our, our unity grew, our faith grew, our faith in the things of God. We baptized nine people on Easter, and we just saw God do amazing thing after amazing thing, miracle after miracle. And I really, Krista and I, we attribute it to the 21 days of fasting that we took part of at the beginning of the year. And as we move forward, I just don't want us to miss out on what God has for us. So just so we, again, all understand uh, really what fasting is, I just want to go over some biblical principles of fasting. Uh, fasting, it always, it, when you're speaking it in the biblical sense, it always involves food. Hey, it's a great thing to fast media or television or, or anything like that for a season of time. And you can do that during those 21 days. But if you're talking about biblical fasting, that's not really biblical fasting. B biblical fasting, it involves giving up some sort of food. Throughout the Bible, we see people giving up uh, food entirely, uh, no food, no water. We see people doing uh, f no food but water. We see people doing kind of select foods. Like Daniel, when he fasted, he would only eat fruits and vegetables. And this is something, I'm like even nervous to say it from the pulpit, but this is something Krista and I are going to try. Like I love meat, even just the thought of like no meat is so hard for me. Uh, but we're going to try doing that. Uh, uh, there's different time periods, lengths of time that people fasted during, during the Bible. Some people fasted like Moses for 40 days. Jesus fasted for 40 days. Daniel fasted for 21 days. Days. That's what we're going to, that's what I'm calling us to do. Uh, some people fasted for eight days. Some people fasted for three days. Uh, but my challenge, again, it's 21 days to fast food. If you're pregnant, if you've got medical conditions, take those things into account. Don't feel guilty uh, for, you know, not you're not uh, just abstaining from all sorts of kinds of food, uh, but make it count throughout this 21 days. If it means nothing to you, it maybe means nothing to God. If it's not a sacrifice for you, it's probably not a sacrifice uh, and not pleasing really to the Lord. Uh, don't just fast from like 11 p.m. to 6 a.m., okay? That's, I mean, you can go there. If that's really a sacrifice for you, you, you do it. But like, it, for me, that's not a sacrifice because I'm sleeping during that time. Don't just go to fast food stores, okay? Just because you're fasting food doesn't mean that you just go to fast food stores and get your food from that. Plus, it's probably not that healthy. Uh, but, but again, God wants to do something in our hearts as we fast. There are things that God wants to do uh, that he really can't until we take fasting seriously. There's things that God wants to do in this church uh, that really sometimes only come as we fast. I just think about the story where, where, where Jesus says to his disciples, you know, they're having trouble casting out a demon. And, and Jesus says, hey, this kind only comes out through prayer and through fasting. There's certain things that God wants to do in our lives that can only really happen as we take this discipline seriously, fasting. Uh, when you fast, you got to limit distribution distractions, write down your goals, write down what you're fasting for, get a buddy so that you can like text each other and call each other and say, hey, the chocolate chips are calling my name. You got to pray for me. Uh, get a buddy to do it with and then don't get legalistic. And as we end here this morning, I want to invite Brittany on up to play for us if you're available to play. Uh, but don't get legalistic. You know, so often as we talk about spiritual disciplines like fasting or prayer times or, or our Bible study habits, uh, my, in my own heart, like I can get legalistic about it. I can be like, uh, you know, oh, I, 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 I said I was going to skip this meal, but I, I ate like the carrots or, you know, that sort of thing. And you can kind of like get down on yourself and, and start, to, start to beat yourself up. Don't get legalistic. I want to show you a few pictures up on the screen, and I kind of did this last year. I just felt like it was such a great uh, analogy, a picture for us. So 
So this is a drawing or a coloring that Ella did, okay, for me. She gave it to me. I think that that's Dory, right? Isn't that Dory from Finding Dory? Uh, so pretty good. I mean, she's five years old. Uh, it's pretty good. I mean, I'm a proud parent, you know. Uh, pretty good. Here's Gabe. Now, he just turned four. It's pretty good, too. I don't know what's going on with the eyes, but, I mean, it's good. It's good. It's good. I, I mean, I, I was just proud to, like, receive this as a parent. Now, here's Audra. She's about to turn three in February, okay? So that's Audra's. So, so like, Audra, you know, she sees her brothers and sisters handing these drawings to me and stuff, and so she wants to do it, too. And so she's, like, all proud, you know? Comes upstairs, and she's all proud to give me this, this picture. And I'm like, I'm like, oh my goodness, Audra, like this is fantastic. You know, and I'm ooh and on and over it, like, wow, look at your color choice. It's just so amazing. And like, you're going for that abstract look. I love it, you know? And 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 it's just it, it just touches me, like as her father, that she would want to give this to me. Now Audra isn't in the room, right? I don't want to make fun of her or anything. But like in reality, like it's not that good, you know? Like, let's be real, okay? I mean, it, she colors outside the lines, and it, I mean, it's not all the way filled in, but yet it blesses my heart as her father, just as much as the other kids. Like, there's no one that I really like better. It, it all just, it moves me. Like, I can almost start crying just thinking about this little sweet girl walking up to her dad and given this to me. You know, Ezra didn't create like a list when he called the fast. He's, he didn't like create boundaries for the people and say, hey, you got to fast this, 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 and this. And hey, don't, don't be doing that. Like, what are you doing over here? Like, I, I told you to fast, you know? And he didn't say, hey, I didn't say for a hour. I said for this amount of time. He didn't do any of that. He just said, hey, Let's fast together. Let's ask for God's hand to be upon us. And you might color outside the line sometimes. You might not get it all filled in just right. But you take it seriously. And you give God your best. And, and you, you walk up to the Lord and say, here's my coloring. Here's my offering to you. I, I, I know it's probably not much, but I want to give this to you as an act of worship. And in response, I, I'm just asking that your hand would continue to be on my life, moving me forward into the things that you're calling me to. Friends, I just, again, I want to urge us to consider fasting during these 21 days, starting tomorrow, going up to Sunday, January 22nd. I think there's a, like a potluck that day as Teen Challenge is going to be here. Uh, all of us are going to be like at the buffet line, like going crazy and stuff. But, but again, I just want to call us to this and, and really by faith do it and ask that the Lord's hand would continue to be on our church. You just listened to a message from Root River Community Church. For more information about our church or how to make Jesus the Lord of your life, visit our website at rootriver.org.